Be a little better. I don't know if everybody can see you from that side, but y'all can move around to do that. Well, okay, that'd that. be a good idea. Let me move over here so I'm not behind the post. Okay. <laughs> now, that introduction that Carol gave me, I, I, I want you to know that almost all those things she said are true, or all of them are almost true. You can decide which. <laughs> I don't want to do anything to destroy uh, Carol's reputation for truth and veracity, so I'll explain all that to you as I go through the program. Uh, for example, I did study in Paris, uh, Paris, Texas, that's my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> So you see, she wasn't lying when she said that. I did study in Paris, and, and uh, when I studied this instrument around the house, it made all the dogs howl, so they made me go over to Fourth Ward Schoolyard to practice uh, so that uh, I wouldn't disturb the dogs. And if you let me rosin up the bow, I'll do the first number for you here. and distant makes the Stradivarius of the saws. If you want a, you want a good playing saw, buy a distant. Now the man in the hardware store looks at you kind of funny when you come in with your violin bow and start playing all the saws. <laughs> now, for those of you who have given violin lessons to your children or your grandchildren, don't, don't despair. All is not lost. I've still got the bow and the case. Uh, I took three years of violin lessons when I was a kid, but what I really use the case for now is to carry on all my harmonicas. So if you'll bear with me a moment, I'll get them all set out. <laughs> I've got quite a few here, and uh, I talked to Carol about the length of the program, and I probably won't be able to play a number on each one. <laughs> we might here all afternoon if I did that. Uh. <laughs> 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 oh, good, man. I got one more here, I think. Let's see if I don't. Yeah. <laughs> now I have a little program here so I don't get lost, but what I'd like to do for you is to illustrate a lot of different styles of harmonic playing. And I'd like to start off with an old fiddle tune called Soldier's Joy, if I can find the harmonica that has that one hidden in it. Let's see, where is it, where is it, where is it? There it is. No? Well, that seems to have gotten away. Where'd it go? I'll use this one. Soldier's Joy. You can't stay on very long, they get too monotonous. So I'm going to be playing a lot of different songs. So if you should decide you want to hold your applause till the end of the program, don't do it. <laughs> if there's any doubt, I'll give you a little signal when it's your time. Uh, 
<laughs> now I'd like to play a little soft, sweet harmonica for you. Completely different style, a little Edelweiss. <laughs> and TV. I made a record once over in Oak Cliff in a recording studio in a man's garage. It was called Yodel Records. Uh, and we made two sides of a 45 RPM, so you can get an idea how long ago it was. I don't think you can buy 45s anymore, but a little country mm -hmm. western group. And we came over here to Garland, to the Garland Park, to the Big G Jamboree, played live and plugged our new record and sold two copies to the same man. <laughs> what did you to me? Uh, uh, I am a recording star, so uh, that, that, see, uh, that, that was almost right there. Uh, on, on the TV appearances, I was on the Mr. Peppermint show twice, and the second time Jerry Haynes was off the air for about five years, and I, I hope I didn't have anything to do with that. <laughs> and then I hit what I thought was the pinnacle of my musical career in 1980 when I had uh, eight minutes on PM Magazine. Uh, but now I'm not sure. There may, may still be other places for me to go with my act. Uh, they've got this America's Funniest Home Video program. So maybe, I don't, maybe there's still some other places for me. Now I'd like to do a little blues number. Some of you will no doubt remember a little sugar blues, the way Clyde McCoy used to do it. changes in it and uh, they're kind of strange but uh, this is my version of old Joe Clark uh-oh got that upside down <laughs> concerned about exactly what to use because I don't want to offend anyone. I thought for a long time about what might be appropriate for this group since I didn't know anything of your religious background. Uh, I think I found it and I'd like to do the religious number for you at this time. <coughs> Winchester Cathedral. <coughs>
Carroll said about my recent engagement at the Sands Hotel in Las Vegas. The only thing wrong about that was it was about 30 years ago. Uh, <laughs> I was an engineer working at uh, Texas Instruments at the time, and uh, a friend of mine, Audra Boyd and I, another engineer, were out there calling on a client at Nellis Air Force Base, and the TI receptionist put us up in the Sands Hotel, and we were walking around watching all the people gambling, spending their money, and you know those game rooms don't have any windows or any clocks in them. They don't want you to know if it's day or night or whatever. As long as you're spending your money, they're happy. And we were wandering around watching all this, and Roger turned to me and said, Bob, what would happen if you walked through the lobby of the Sands Hotel playing your harmonica? I said, well, Roger, I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> and that's the only one I had with me. I had it in my pocket. I always carried it along with me. So I walked across the lobby of the Sands Hotel like this. to try to make my programs a little bit educational as well as I hope entertaining. Uh, this is an old song I heard when I was a young child and it was called The Eighth of January. And then later on, uh, a guy by the name of Johnny Horton came out with a record on this in the country and western it crossed over to Pops and was an all-time bestseller. He called it The Battle of New Orleans. <laughs> and I didn't know if The Battle of New Orleans had anything to do with The Eighth of January or not. And I looked in the history book one day and lo and behold, the Battle of New Orleans was fought on the 8th of January, 1815. It was the last battle of the War of 1812. And it was a very famous battle because it was fought after the end of the war. The peace treaty had already been signed, but neither side knew it because they didn't have radio and television, telegraph and things back then. Uh, the uh, English troops were led by General Sir Edward Packingham, and the U.S. Irregulars were led by Andrew Jackson, of course. And I don't know if any of you have ties back to the old country. Carol just got back from England. Uh, it's not my purpose to stir up any old animosities or anything, but if you believe the words to the song, we won. <laughs> the Americans chased the British all the way down the Gulf of Mexico. And this is the song written about that great battle, the Battle of New Orleans, 8th of January, 1815.
Now, no harmonica program's complete without a train song, so I'm going to do my train song for you now, little Casey Jones <laughs> in my Chet Atkins style harmonica. <laughs> and I think the Germans invented the harmonica for playing polkas. And the most famous polka of all, uh, as a non-drinking man, always gives me a little trouble. Uh, I do this for a lot of church groups, and, and I've played in church auditoriums and, and uh, community centers and all sorts of things, so I just call it the barrel polka. Go ahead and play it. <laughs> I need to explain that a little bit too. My daughter-in-law is from St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. And when my wife and I went up for she and my son's wedding, I played in the basement of her parents' home in St. Catharines, so I have played in Canada. <laughs> Honeywell has a Maquiladora plant right across Red River from El Paso, I mean the Rio Grande River in El Paso from uh, 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 in Juarez. And I went down for the engineering banquet in Juarez for the Honeywell plant, and I played down there, so I played in Mexico. <laughs> and I have, as I've traveled about in my job, I've played in hotel rooms and motel rooms all over the United States, just like I was saying. <laughs> so see, that much of it's right. But what she didn't know, really, was that I have played in Europe. Uh, I was over there at an electronics convention with my wife and my youngest daughter. And we had been up in Holland for three days and took the train across Belgium down into Paris, France, and uh, we were seeing all the sights. You know, we did the 15-minute tour of the Louvre, and we, we went to the Eiffel Tower, and we did all the things that tourists do. And we were in the subway station, and a train pulled in, and I was reading the subway map, and the door opened, and my wife and daughter got on, and I said, that's not our train, and the doors closed. <laughs> and left me standing there on the platform. Well, I decided that even though I'm from Paris, uh, it's Paris, Texas, not Paris, France, and my French is rather limited, so if I if it's ever going to see my wife and daughter again, I better stay right where I was, because they knew where I was. If I went after them, I'd never see them again, so I stayed there, and they went to the next station and went across and came back on the next train and got off on the other side of the track. Well, while I was standing there, there was these two drunk French sailors on a bench behind me trying to learn to play the harmonica. And they were murdered. It was bad. I mean, you know, they have all these great musicians in the subway stations in France if you've ever been over there. And these guys were murdered. They, they were really bad. And, and the platform was crowded, but 10 feet around these guys, it was an empty space. No one could stand to be any closer than 10 feet to these two guys. So I stood there and I watched and I saw my wife and daughter get off the train on the other side. And I cut across the open space with this harmonica here I just bought up in Holland playing Strawberry Rome. 
and I got a round of applause from all the people standing on the platform because of <laughs> the difference. And so I have played in Europe in Paris, France, <laughs> and the subway station. I just don't want to do anything to destroy his, destroy Carol's reputation for truth and veracity. I just want you to know that all those things she said are true. Uh, now I'd like to do my classical number for you. Uh, this is a number uh, made famous by the late, great Elson Eddy. Uh, he and uh, Jeanette MacDonald, you, some of you will remember, made beautiful music for many years on radio and in movies, uh, before TV, I guess, really. Uh, this is a program that Nelson Eddy used to use frequently on his programs, and, and I like to continue that tradition and use it whenever I have a chance. And I'd like to do this classical number for you at this time. Starting bread. <laughs> imitating the bagpipes. Now, people think of the bagpipes as being a Scottish instrument, but they play the pipes in Ireland too, and being of Scotch-Irish descent, and I won't leave anybody out, I'm going to do a little Scottish tune on the bagpipes and a little Irish washerwoman on the bagpipes. <laughs> If you're pumping time with the music, you run out of air, you know, you have to just pump, forget your feet, and go ahead and play if you're going to play it. Takes a lot of wind, but it sounds something like this. <clears throat> sidewalks of New York. You know, this is the barrel organ, the, the hurdy-gurdy organ grinder machine that the guy turns the crank and he goes, da 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 and it goes, um, bum, 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 all at the same time. Uh, well, this guy has to have a handlebar mustache and a monkey on a chain with a cup. You're right, yeah, that's all, all, all part of it. But uh, this number takes a little preparation, and before I start my preparation, I want to remind you that when a singer gets up to sing, it's customary for him to clear his throat, right? It's so customary, in fact, that you're seldom even conscious of the fact that he does it. So just keep that in mind while I get ready for this number. <laughs> Now remember, sidewalks in New York, da da no, bum bum, and for some reason, after I do this, nobody ever wants to borrow my harmonicas. Now, I, don't know, I don't know why that is, but if that antihistamine I took this morning is still working, you'll hear the old organ grinder, the hurdy-gurdy playing sidewalks in New York.
students here that don't believe that I was playing the harmonica with my nose. Uh, I'm going to try to prove to you that I was. Uh, you know, you can do all that on one. You can go... Well, just to prove to you I was playing my harmonica with my nose. Well, I don't know, some of you in the back may be too far away. Uh, let me just say I want you to leave here this afternoon believing I can play the harmonica with my nose or I can whistle through my nose. I don't care which one you believe. <laughs> I'm going to do that little simple song I did on the pump organ a while ago and whistle, the second time through, whistle a little alto harmony. <laughs> And I don't get me tickled or I can't whistle. Everybody, be serious. <laughs> be serious. <laughs> Here comes the alto now. a number like that. <laughs> There's only one thing I know and I'm going to do that for you. Now this one is more of a reenactment than it is an imitation. This is the reenactment of the great race between the train and the Model T Ford. Now this train is not one of these diesel things you see running around today with an air horn on it. This train is a genuine steam locomotive with a steam whistle on it. And I believe by looking at you, I can tell that some of you know what a Model T Ford is. Right? <laughs> it was a good four-cylinder automobile that Henry Ford made that came in any color you wanted as long as it was black. <laughs> now, I don't know if you can conjure up the sound of a Model T horn or not. Uh, it isn't the Uga horn on the Model A, and it's not the old Bob horn. I'm talking about the later Model Ts from like 24 through 27 that had the uh, generators and batteries and electric horns on them. But I think when you hear the Model T horn, you'll remember it. Uh, this is the reenactment of that race. Maybe you can help me decide who won. <laughs> Uh, what? Hoot. 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 <laughs> I would invite him to 
play a number, but I don't think he wants to use your harmonicas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we did. I think there's no sound we didn't hear from him, right? Only thing, I really used to stay up and watch Jeanette McDonald and Nelson Eddy with my mother. She made me stay up to watch them, and I thoroughly enjoyed them, so I thought I was going to hear some music. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you very much. The last time I heard him perform, um, he had, I, I believe it was cancer oh, of your nose. nose. Yeah. He was taking radiation treatments, and he still played the harmonica with his nose. <laughs> and, and I understand that you're doing a lot better, and we're real happy and, and glad that you are. Oh, no. yeah. Speaking of the den of iniquities that he was doing in the Sands Hotel, I wanted to remind you that Beverly and I are doing a tour. We've got one more number for you, and uh, it's our favorite number. And uh, I could make all kinds of uh, introductory remarks to it, but I, I think if I would just uh, remind you what you might see. If you were to be in New Orleans and you happened to look up and you saw a, a funeral procession coming down the street, and I might say a black funeral.
all of you for being here. It's a real, real pleasure. I have to scratch this up a little bit. I appreciate the wives coming along with them. That, that made it worthwhile. Thank you.